Familiar sounds and voices can help people awaken from coma. Well, 78% overall. And this is familiar. We know of the stories about the little boy who was hit, knocked off his bike, he's been in a coma, they, his family surround him with Liverpool scarves and plays will never walk alone continuously, and he wakes up. Even Gerard comes in, gives him a teddy bear dressed in red, and he wakes up. Here's a quote. The patient in a state of coma should be spoken to in a loud voice, splashed with cold water, and exposed to bright light. So the idea here is that the person in the coma, they're just very, very deeply asleep. <coughs> Wake them up! If noise, bright light and water doesn't do it, then something they're deeply emotionally attached to will somehow get under their skin and into their psyche and wake them up. Familiar voices. Well, that quote dates from BC 460 to 370, it's actually from Hippocrates, one of the earliest writers on medicine, from whom the Hippocratic Oath, that doctors still swear to at their graduation ceremony, <coughs> he wrote this. So the view has little changed in two and a half thousand years. Evidence for this false belief goes back a long way. And I do say it's a false belief. Because although people do occasionally waken from long comas, from these persistent vegetative states and so on, they can wake up occasionally. But it's nothing to do with the stimulation that they're receiving. It's not because they're being brought back to awareness because of familiar voices. Okay, now the idea that familiar faces sensory stimulation and so on can wake people up it comes from largely uh, it's promoted by um, Mihai Kimanchescu called the Coma Arousal Routine and here's a web page from this Institute for the Achievement of Human Potential where it says that sensory stimulation is now a recognised modality of treatment for patients in a coma so there's a web page that says it works. It's a recognised modality of treatment, at least. It's a medical way of saying it works. But here's the evidence that it doesn't. So this is an abstract I found in a web search from Brain Injury, uh, 1992. The effectiveness of coma arousal intervention. <coughs> they actually studied people put it to different programs to see how many of them improved when <coughs> put through um, a coma arousal program. It called for a sequence of vigorous multi-sensory stimulations to be applied to the patient by a relative for up to eight hours a day for seven days a week. Now, if you're a relative of someone who's in a deep coma, you desperately want them to get better. This program asks you to stimulate them Eight hours a day, seven days a week. That's a lot to put the relatives through. So let's hope it works. An independent study team monitored two patient outcomes, time taken to obey a simple command, and the Glasgow outcome scale as standard ways of assessing coma death. Outcomes were compared with a reference group. The sample size would have detected a 40% recovery that improvement in the recovery rate. No significant improvements were noted in either the time to obey a simple command or in the Glasgow <coughs> outcome scale. Although the observed difference in the latter group, the Glasgow outcome scale, was 11% in favour of the pilot study patients. So there was a small increase of 11%, but nothing <coughs> near statistically <coughs> significant. This study was unable to find any evidence that coma arousal for all its arduous patient contact had a markedly better outcome compared with conventional treatment. So that's a study done where they actually compared it with a reference group. <coughs> One study, it was done 20 years ago. Well, this was 10 years ago. Sensory stimulation of injured individuals in coma or vegetative state 
the results of a Cochrane systematic review. Now, this is like that meta-analytic <coughs> study we saw in intelligence. This is where people have gone back and looked at every single study that's been published that's used this approach. So they went back and looked at everything that had been done from 1966 to the year 2002. Unfortunately, they only found three studies <coughs> that met the criteria for experimental rigour. And none of them provided useful and valid results on outcomes of clinical relevance for coma patients. The conclusions of all this work, this systematic review indicates there is no reliable evidence to support the effectiveness of multisensory stimulation programs in patients in coma or the vegetative state. It doesn't work. And a multisensory task force on persistent and vegetative state came to these conclusions that were published in the New England Journal of Medicine. But reports of improvement in coma stimulation programs were published, but there have been no <coughs> verified control studies. Overall, there's no published evidence that coma sensory stimulation improves the clinical outcomes in patients in a persistent vegetative state. And what's interesting about that conclusion is that one of the members of that task force was Mikhail Dimanchescu, who was the guy promoting it still on his website and saying it was now a recognised modality. When it's a recognised modality, all that means is we know people do it. What he fails to say on his website is, and we know of no evidence that it works. <coughs> so the conclusions I want you to take away from this introductory uh, lecture is that the most obvious answers that come to mind when you're asked these things are not always correct. They're the things that are out there in the wider culture, things that we've heard, but things that we've not actually evaluated. We accept them because we've heard them a lot of times. When you actually start to think about them, look at each phrase in the frame, you can start to say, can this really be true? Why are they saying they test with fetuses who are 14 weeks old? How did they do that? So psychology is not always a big obvious. Something I think is very important. You have to think carefully about your assumptions. And what I'm going to do over the next four <coughs> sessions is show you how you can test those five major mind myths and look at the evidence behind them.